So I'm off tomorrow on a road trip and uh, it got me wondering, which it always has whenever I've jumped into a car for a long drive, about how auto manufacturers actually manage to make some car music systems sound as good as they do. Uh, a lot of mass market cars don't really, you know, hit the spot when it comes to enjoying music. So a lot of people do look at uh, swapping out speakers, swapping out music systems and so on. But that's usually because uh, a lot of manufacturers do have certain limitations, which I have noticed in all of my road trips. So how about for a change, you join me in my car and we talk about all of the issues that auto manufacturers face for automotive audio. So welcome to the confines of my car and uh, the few things I have observed, of course, uh, a car audio compared to what you're listening to at home in the confines of a room. One thing I usually do is if I've got an AC on, I let it cool the room down quite a bit so that I can switch the AC off and switch off the fan so that I have no noise really intruding on my audio consumption. So over here, you do have a lot of things. Well, first of all, you do have traffic. Uh, you do have people who are honking, uh, engine motor sounds and so on. And then over and above that, uh, you do also have the same sounds that are coming from your own car. So not to get too technical, but how about we just try and see how much sound actually penetrates into your cabin from your own engine and even from the outside world, just to see how much noise is interfering with your music listening. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw a screen recording of what's going on on my phone. I do have a sound meter app that's on. Bear in mind, this is not terrifically scientific, but I found these sound meters to be relatively accurate. Maybe it's a dB or two dBs off. So just to give you a reference point with my engine off and my AC off and with a little sound with a little traffic going past uh, me talking to you is labeled as anywhere between busy traffic and a conversation decibel level so it's hovering around maybe 70 to 72 when I'm talking and let's see what it is when I go silent so it's hovering around maybe around 45 to 50 dB uh, in the cabin. So now next step is let's switch on the engine and see how much that penetrates into the cabin. Okay, so with the engine running, it's around 70 to 75. Bear in mind, this is a diesel engine, so it will be a bit louder than a petrol engine. Uh, and what I'll do is I'll fire up the AC as well. It's claiming busy traffic. It's 71, 72. I'll increase to medium fan because most people will have it at medium at least. Hovering around 76, 77 decibels. So uh, this is an idea of how much noise you're letting into the cabin. So uh, before I start driving, in fact, uh, before we introduce, I'll reduce the AC. Before we introduce the road noise, Let's see how much the uh, engine does penetrate. Let's say if you're at a uh, cruising speed on the highway, I'm normally hovering between 2000 and 3000 RPM. So I'll hold the engine revs at about 2500 RPM and see how much that penetrates into the cabin. So right now we're at around 70, I think when I'm not talking. Yeah, and I'll, I'll hold, I'll hold RPM at two and a half thousand. So 74, 75. So let's fire up the AC again, put it on medium and see what kind of noise we let in. So now you're going to introduce a whole lot of other factors. So the minute you start moving, you're talking about road noise. Uh, I mean, your engine is taking a load, so it's going to, it's most likely going to be a little louder. You're going to have uh, road noise off the road. What kind of road you're on also does matter because if you're on a tarmac road or an asphalt road, usually the noise off of these surfaces aren't as bad. The minute you roll, roll onto a road that's made out of concrete, there's a lot more resistance. There's a lot more friction going on. So you do get a lot more noise coming off the road. So right now, let's say I'm holding about um, 60 kilometers per hour. I'll go silent to see what this says. We're at around 76 uh, dB. So that's, according to this, a busy street, uh, which is still not too bad. Now, mind you, these are all sounds that are well above that 45 dB mark. So in an absolutely quiet cabin without an engine running, without any road noise, obviously listening to your music is going to be that much more enjoyable. Uh, but then again, yes, this is not a place where you do want to sit and listen to hi-fi music. 
uh, you're not going to be have, having your absolute in-depth listening sessions over here. This is just an experiment to see how much of your music is taken over by other frequencies. So a lot of these frequencies coming in do work to a certain extent as a noise cancelling element uh, for your music. So the first thing you're going to notice is your high frequencies and low frequencies are robbed from you when you listen to music at a reasonable level. Uh, now, I, I, I don't really uh, think listening to loud music in the car is a safe thing to do and I I strongly think you should avoid doing that. Uh, the same way I, I strongly believe you shouldn't listen to a set of earphones while riding a motorbike and wearing a helmet at the same time. You want to be aware of all your surroundings for safety reasons. Why high frequencies and lower frequencies are usually the ones to go get lost uh, when you're driving is primarily because when you're driving faster on the highway, all the wind noise you're getting uh, off the windscreen, off the mirrors are eliminating the higher frequencies to a certain extent. The road noise, the engine noise, these frequencies are eliminating a lot of the lower mids to bass frequencies. So uh, you, you'll definitely feel like there's not enough. So now what is the first thing that people do? They crank up their volume, which goes back to that safety issue. One of the things automotive manufacturers did for car audio was introduce something in the early 90s, mid 90s, which was called the loudness setting on your music system, which in fact did change the way a lot of people listen to the systems because those frequencies that were getting eliminated being mainly being your highs and your lows uh, once you push the loudness button it elevated highs and lows so that they wouldn't be lost as much no doubt your mids would be a little recessed but mids usually don't get impacted as much as the higher and lower frequencies so this uh, feature was actually funnily something enough that was later absorbed onto even home theater systems just to add that little bit of color if you wanted more bass and a little more treble and another issue you have with automotive audio is you're not sitting dead center of a stereo setup you're, you're not sitting dead center you're sitting on either side of the vehicle depending on which country you're driving in of course and the very next thing is your speakers aren't even at ear level which of course if you are a seasoned audiophile you know that ideally your ear level should be at uh, tweeter level which it's not been at least in most mass market cars you've always had speakers firing at your ankles so all of these problems might seem pretty minor to you but these are very big problems problems that auto manufacturers face whenever it comes to the sound systems in cars and it's it's just become a staple thing where you know you're going to get a sound system in a car and you, you kind of take it for granted that hey no matter what you get it's going to sound good but these are all the problems they face and tackling these issues is not exactly being the easiest thing to do because you're talking about 45 db when you're sitting in a car that has no engine on no air conditioning on which is relatively quiet and it does insulate reasonably well the minute you've got your engine running and your AC running, you're well almost twice the amount of noise that's you've got tw twice the amount of noise that's almost coming in. And this decibel level is despite this car having as much insulation as it can. So here are the solutions that auto manufacturers have tried to do. So uh, you will have on most cars these days, especially if they're a diesel engine, they do have some sort of insulation between the engine bay and the cabin. Your uh, glass quality also makes a big difference. With some higher end cars, you'll see a double layer of glass. So when you put the window down, you'll see uh, it's as if they've put two bits of glass together. This does help in keeping a lot of the outside noise out. And then of course, between your wheel arches and your wheel, you do have another carpet layer. So uh, they do a similar thing for your doors. So the, within your doors, you will have a whole bunch of insulation so that outside noise doesn't come in, be it your traffic, be it your honking, be it your, your road, road noise coming off the road, be it uh, asphalt, be it concrete. So a lot of these things have to be engineered in, in a lot of detail before it's passed. And then they decide that, okay, fine, this is the best setup that we can have to insulate this cabin. After that, they figure out what kind of systems and all they can put in the cars. So now auto manufacturers didn't only do the loudness mode in the 90s to try and figure this out. They have been hard at work uh, over all these decades. For one, they've tried to move the speakers away from your ankles and move them a little higher up. So the problem being, if you want a lower frequency driver, it needs to be larger. So having a larger speaker higher up doesn't really make any sense. You don't have the space for it because you've got everything from your, uh, your handles to hold on to, to close the door. You need your levers to open the doors. Uh, there's no space to put a much larger driver there. So what they've done instead, uh, well, now I'm noticing even some mass market cars are coming with this, but they've got a separate uh, tweeter or a squawker that's slightly higher up. Yes, it's not at ear level, but it's much higher than what it normally would have been. 
and they do tend to angle them slightly upwards towards your ear so this has benefited greatly when it comes to the sound system within the car your high frequencies aren't as lost as they used to be if it was firing towards your ankles music has gotten richer uh, you're, you're bound to hear much better crystalline detail you're, you're bound to get much better vocals as well low frequencies on the other hand are either now coming at your ankles or at your waist this car has a speaker that's uh, near my hip in fact uh, in the driver's side door uh, whereas i've noticed a few manufacturers have started putting subwoofers into mass market cars which is almost unbelievable uh, then again i think those are usually the top spec cars that have this so you must be thinking of the tube subwoofers that people used to put when they used to go to a uh, car accessory shop and throw that into the boot and get rid of all boot space but no uh, now you do get active subwoofers uh, the tubes are usually passive so now you get active ones that you can even slide under your passenger seat uh, you know just to get a little more bass uh, if you feel your system is a bit lacking and uh, you the manufacturers themselves uh, do put uh, subwoofers in the boots that sometimes sit under your, your step knee which is quite interesting now you might think that may not make sense but uh, having a subwoofer in the boot isn't so bad because you won't really be able to tell where that frequency is coming from you're able to pinpoint high frequencies and mid frequencies to a certain extent but low frequencies you can't really pinpoint and say okay it's definitely coming from, from the boot or it's coming from under a seat uh, the human ear can't really decipher where really low frequencies come from so this is a pretty good fix from the manufacturer to say that you know we we're lacking in lower frequencies how do we implement it in the best way possible without uh, interfering in taking up more space in the car so it's not like auto manufacturers have just given up on car audio saying it's impossible it doesn't make any sense the driver is sitting off center the speakers aren't in the right place they've figured out that this is the problem and they have tried to cater to certain solutions one company in particular that i found really interesting i read about maybe a few months ago Continental has tied up with uh, none other than Sennheiser and they've introduced a new technology which well we've not seen mass market yet but I'm I'm pretty sure they've got their prototypes and we have seen certain prototypes like this in the in the past they've got certain uh, units that can be connected to different surfaces so uh, you can either stick it up against a glass or you can stick it up against a dashboard or a steering wheel or a sun visor and it helps vibrate that surface so it's essentially going to do what uh, a, a traditional speaker a diaphragm is going to do it vibrates and it makes air move so with this technology they they're trying to bring audio first of all closer to you and not put it in a door or behind a door uh, they're hoping to make dashboards create sound they're, they're hoping to make doors create sound so it's not just uh, a, a traditional speaker in your in your door that's uh, restricted with all these uh, size issues and uh, fighting against noise outside and so on and so forth does their system come with active noise cancelling i'm not too sure they have not really mentioned anything like that but there are there are manufacturers who have implemented active noise cancelling from from a speaker system in a car it does help cut out the opposing frequencies from outside yes uh, it does isolate you better which makes the listening experience that much better uh, but all this goes to show that these guys are still pushing for a better solution will automotive audio ever sound as good as a stereo setup at home or even a quadraphonic setup i don't know but then again you never know what the future has in store and what these guys are up to they're very secretive about for all you know we could see it next month we could see it next year or we may even see it in a decade so there you have it those are most of the problems that i've noticed with automotive audio i'm sure there are many more that these guys face with the guys who are engineering these music systems and cars uh, it would be absolutely amazing if i could you know get in touch with some of these guys and figure out what they do exactly but uh, i leave that for another time if it does happen at all and i hope you did enjoy this video and find it beneficial in some way or the other and of course thank you for tuning into paul's pov for some sound advice you of course don't have your front left and right channel if you're into stereo listening you turn